plugging into anywhere that customer feedback comes in. And that could be your email, that could be Slack, that could be Zendesk. System of records can now have much more context and context is what human beings use to make decisions. There's insatiable demand right now, a demand and in, in, frankly in which I've never really seen. We are constantly being sold to. It feels like all the time, selling is a constant. But maybe what has changed is the way that we're being sold to and specifically technology's role in that. So tell me a little bit about that. How has sales changed over the last few decades? Sales is maybe the oldest profession uh, that, there, that there really is. And it, sales has been going on since prehistoric times. Like as long as people have been doing something with the act of trade, there has been the need to record who is my customer, where are they, what do they need, what do they bought from me, right? So like that act is not necessarily new. Um, I'd say the first kind of like tracking mechanism that you might have had would be like someone writing that down on a piece of paper. Maybe that evolved into like a Rolodex in the 1950s. You think of Mad Men. Um, but then like the modern kind of CRM really came around in like the 80s with, with ACT or uh, maybe even the 90s with Siebel Systems. And these were the first like digital CRM, right? But at the end of the day, it was always the same exact act as that prehistoric time. It's like there's a salesperson, they're doing some act of selling. They're recording that information and they're putting it into a, at a certain place. Um, it, Salesforce then comes in at the turn of the century in 99 and says, hey, let's move this into the cloud. Let's actually make it an easier, create an easier way for that sales rep to enter that information and have it have access to it on the go, right? So now you can go and log into your system and have all that information wherever you might be. At the end of the day though, it's always been a sales rep or whoever that might be with a relationship with a customer that wants to record that information. What's interesting about this moment in time is that the way that that information is being captured, there's an opportunity to do it in an entirely different way. Like there's been this tectonic shift in the way that technology works. Um, and so now instead of a human being sitting down at their computer and entering something in, we now can have basically AI always on and recording that conversation in real time or frankly having that conversation. And so you start to think about all of the legacy systems, whether it's pen and paper, Siebel systems or Salesforce that have been dependent on a human. And now you're starting to see an AI native system that can have these conversations and really start to capture that information at the source rather than waiting for the human. For the companies who are using these tools compared to <clears throat> the alternative of not having tools or pen and paper, like you said, like how reliant are these companies on these tools and how embedded are these systems? Mm. They're extremely embedded. I mean, I think there's a reason that all venture capitalists and technologists are obsessed with this idea of the system of record. It's because historically, systems of record have benefited from tremendous moats and that they are really hard to rip out. And the reason they're really hard to rip out is they have like the source of truth data about some of your most important parts of your business. In this case, we're talking about like who your customers are and who your prospects are. And so, I mean, you wrote this article that's literally called The Death of a Salesforce, which is a pretty strong statement, right? But but you are talking about some pretty fundamental shifts of structured to unstructured data. So tell me more about that. How does that shift actually potentially reshape the sales cycle? Or in this case, like you're saying, like the death of a Salesforce? One of the concepts I've always I've loved for a very long time is like don't focus on activities focused on achievements. Mm -hmm. And the the problem with historical sales software is so much of like the activities that you track as like the leading indicators of success of whether or not you're doing a good job of whether or not you're, you are, um, really come down to like these like very fallible activities by the rep um, or by the, by the team manager or whoever it might be. And so insofar as you can get rid of that and basically have just like what is the core piece of truth, right? What is happening with the customer? What's really going on in, the, in, in uh, you know, in the field? And basically using that to power your sales force, like that's when this gets to get really interesting and you can start to focus on, okay, what are actually the core pieces of activity that do lead to achievement rather than the things that like, you know, you intuitively think are right or, or may I don't really think are right. It just, it's like, what is the cold hard data um, and how do we make better decisions? What's an example of something that you think could disappear completely with this new approach? Maybe before I get to the things that will disappear, I don't think we want to get up here and say like sales is going to disappear. Um, I used to run a sales team uh, in the job before this. Mark obviously sold. AI is not going to replace like a very high quality sales process. Like you need to figure out who your customer is. You need to figure out what they want and you need to build the best product and the right process around that to be, to be effective. And so like that human element is not going to go away. Now, I think parts of that process to your point, like will disappear and they will 
frankly change a lot. Um, something that we're seeing a, um, a ton of right now is like, all right, we call it intelligent pipeline in, in, our, in our post. Um, but like basically, how are you identifying prospects? How are you contacting prospects? How are you scheduling meetings and, and basically doing the qualification process that's normally associated with like an SDR? Um, and so you start to think about, okay, what is that? What is the role of that human being? It's like, you know, it's almost a rite of passage in sales. Like you kind of have to do it. You, you, it's a miserable existence. You sit on the phone all day. You make however many cold calls. You send how, however many emails. Like we've both done this. It's horrible. Um, and it can be automated, right? And so, like you think about, you know, there are businesses out there, like uh, you know, Eleven X or others that are in this in this segment that have basically figured out, okay, how do we package up this human being that is really the beginning of any high quality, you know, sales process, at least in the enterprise, and how do we figure out how to okay, we're gonna identify these most interesting prospects. We're gonna figure out like the right way to contact them and generate like a very persuasive um, outbound message. And then we're gonna we're gonna have an interaction with the client and try to schedule it for a more holistic and, and fulsome call, right? Um, with, uh, with an account executive. Like we're starting to see that process like basically disappear with, with certain customers, which is really, really exciting. And frankly, like frees up humans to do the things that they're best at, which is like, sell um right and so i think we're going to see things like that start to disappear in this new world yeah so then that leads to the second question which is if you get rid of all of this early stage process that no one really wants to do and like you said it's kind of a rite of passage and all of those people now have the ability to spend that time on new approaches right so how so what's net new that you think comes from from this yeah totally i mean um we as a firm talk a lot about like voice agents um i think one Concrete example of this is imagine you're a rep on a call with a prospect. Maybe it's a Zoom call or just a regular phone call. Like you can now be getting live coaching from an AI voice agent that is trained on you know all of the data that you mm. have seen from prospects and from existing customers. And as you know your prospect is objecting to something, it kind of inserts the right answer into your ear, and you can like say it on the fly. It kind of reminds me of uh, old school when they're trying to take a test at the end and yeah. it, there's like guys in the parking lot telling them the answers to the test. It's the same thing. Right. Um, but it's also like autonomous vehicles, right? It's like you will have only so many miles and instead you're trained on or a car is trained on all of the different accidents that have happened to all of the cars that have been reported, right? So totally. it's a totally different level of information. 100%. And then I think like the second order implication there is that everything can just become so much more personalized. Like if you think about a sales rep who has a really high quality large lead that they're working, a lot of what they're doing to prepare to close that deal is like personalizing some sort of collateral or deck or something that's gonna convince their prospect to buy their product. Mm -hmm. um, and now think about like how easily you can do that at scale and really tailor to like an individual human who's like, oh, you know, some system picked up that this human was on our website, like let's customize a deck that speaks to this person individually like today and do that with a click of a button instead of a rep spending five hours to put something together that's super custom. And now do that across like every prospect that is in your pipeline. We're just talking about like a level of scale and personalization that hasn't been possible before. Yeah, yeah and how are you seeing that market develop when you think of the fragmentation or the kind of coalescence of it all. Um, what parts of whether it's like prospecting or qualifying or later on in the process, you mentioned like personalization, um, how are you seeing startups start to show up and where are they showing up as well? So we think about the new types of companies we're seeing in the space in kind of four broad categories. We were deliberately broad um, because I think in sales software market maps of the past, things get like hyper granular to a point where everything is sort of overlapping and I think like, everyone kind of shares the same vision of spanning end to end. Mm. So thinking about it in the four broader buckets helps us do that more clearly. And basically we think about it as intelligent pipeline, digital workers, sales enablement plus insights, and CRM plus automations. And we've kind of already touched on like each of these throughout this conversation, but I think now the question will be, okay, if you start with any of those four as the wedge, which wedge best positions you to then, you know, earn the rest of that pie over time. And I don't think we've, we have an answer to that yet. Um, I think that's something that we're really excited to see play out. And I think as you talk to different founders, they have tremendous conviction and one being the right wedge over the other. And so we're, we're still early in that journey. Where are you seeing the most adoption in terms of today, not future looking, but today yeah. you see different sales forces willing to engage with one of those four categories? I think that we're seeing a ton of adoption in the intelligent pipeline category. Um, I think that back to what I said earlier on like what is the job of like the, you know, the thankless job that is being an SDR. Um, it is 
very automatable to think about like, okay, how do I, how do I ingest like, you know, for the, for the companies that know what they're doing and know who they're selling to, how do I ingest all that information about who my ideal customer is? What's the right process? And then how do I basically run that contact mechanism, right? Like there, there is almost no difference um, oftentimes between a very well-trained kind of AI agent and a very poorly trained 22-year-old who's hung over <laughs> from the night before um, you know, <laughs> sitting in a crowded sales floor. And oftentimes you're going to get much more like you're going to get playbook adherence. You're going to get thoughtful follow-up. You're going to get a personalized outreach, whereas the other person is sending like a thoughtless, you know, LinkedIn request or maybe it's a, a half-hearted email. Yeah, right? I would so like the, to connect. Right, yeah, to the wrong decision maker. Right. And so now you start to think about what you can actually do with that. And that's why I think there's insatiable demand right now and demand and in, in frankly, in which I've never really seen um, for products in that intelligent pipeline layer. Yeah. And as some of these categories eat parts of the sales process, as you've talked about, um, how does that change a sales team? You've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but if you no longer have the young college kid who's forced to take all of the early stage calls um, and train that way, like what does that person do? How do you actually train a sales team effectively uh, in this new environment? Today, there is kind of discrete quotas, systems, organizational structures for marketing, sales, customer success and account management and customer support. But if you like take a step back, that whole go-to-market organization is just trying to do what's right by the customer and like be the north star of the voice of the customer. And so it's kind of silly that like, you know, a, a sales rep closes a deal, has a quota for like a new logo, and then a customer success or account manager takes over that logo and has like a different quota and and the relationship is different. Like, I think these teams are just going to be able to work much more closely together and out of the same shared system um and i think they can even be comped together like everyone can just kind of reorient around the thing that matters which is doing right by the customer at all times and so i think the rosy take is that like this will be a great outcome for customers because yeah. i think teams are just going to be much more coordinated much more aligned and the lines will be blurred between like who's generating the pipeline who's closing the pipeline and who's managing the relationship after like everyone can be doing a little bit more of everything so to date, most of these systems of record mostly have structured data. What I imagine as a non-salesperson is like status of company and like contact, email, things like that. In this new world, what would that really look like? You've mentioned multimodal, but like, are we talking images, videos, and like, how would that actually influence the workflow? Yeah, 100%. And it's like all of the above. It's basically plugging into anywhere that customer feedback comes in. And that could be your email, that could be Slack, that could be Zendesk. Those are obvious ones, but think about even the non-obvious ones like Customers might tweet about your product. You might send an NPS survey on Qualtrics. Um, you might have offline meetings that you have to like now record in this mm. universe. And I think like the key point to take away here is that um, system of records can now have much more context. And context is what human beings use to make decisions. That's one of the most compelling parts of the opportunities is, you know, you can replicate human judgment a little bit more as you get more and more context. And as you lack context, it's hard to trust AI agents to act autonomously on your behalf. Yeah, and I think that like basically gets back to the point of what we were saying of like, what is the new system of record? It's like, in, in, in the past, it's just been like a UI to interact with a bunch of human generated data that like, you know, it is your interface to understand what's going on in the business. But if that information is no longer just being surfaced in this like one engagement layer that like a human being is you know creating and maintaining and whatever it might be now you have all these other pieces of data it would be like almost impossible to like actually have that all in one place and like use it effectively right so like how do you think about like that data like actually informing every part of your sales process every part of your marketing process every part of your customer success process and then importantly like now you start to bridge into every part of your product and engineering process. Correct. Like historically, product and engineering aren't really spending that much time clicking around Salesforce. But if you actually have this multimodal system of record that captures all of your customer feedback in one place, all of your prospect feedback in one place, what could possibly be a better tool to feed the input of like roadmap planning and all the yes. things that actually matters to product and engineering? And so you know, now we're starting to talk about systems of record that could bridge different parts of the organization. Like that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're finally gonna fix the whole product versus sales uh, debacle. Yeah, yeah. That's I, like I don't. I don't. We'll, we'll see. Remember, we no, fixed it in this room. I think it was actually this podcast <laughs> this that moment. solved all the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, very exciting times. No, I think it's great. I mean, you use the term maintenance, and it does feel like a lot of systems today are after the fact, right? You take something that's happened and you're maintaining your record of it. But as both of you are saying, it's it's really like this idea of a true second brain where this yeah. information is working for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it, it honestly could become the first brain before it gets to my <laughs> second brain. <laughs> um, and, you know, much more effective version of it. So, um, yeah. Awesome.
Well, this was great. Thank you so much for talking through this. Um, I guess this this podcast is effectively sales, so it's it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't yeah. wait to use some of these tools myself. Yes, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks awesome. for having yeah. us.